You hear the details of this case, they're disturbing. And they also expose the dangers facing children playing online games. Brad Underwood is here with what parents can do to try to avoid situations like this. Brad. Good evening, Paul. Yeah, the case in northern Kentucky is a prime example of how easy it is for predators to not only find children, but request images and videos of them through online gaming. We spoke to a tech expert who works with parents and schools on how to protect children. He says, sadly, these stories are common, but they can be avoided. No matter the gaming system, there's a common feature. You have the ability to talk or chat with those you're gaming with. The big problem for parents, not knowing who is actually on the other end. Where does a predator go that's interested in children? They go to video games. They used to go to the schoolyard, right? But they go to video games. Stephen Smith is the co-founder of A Wired Family. Recent studies he's done prove now more than ever, kids are being approached online and asked questions like, what do you look like? Are you lonely? And can you send me pictures? 61% of young people, 18 and younger, have been contacted by somebody who made them feel uncomfortable because of the conversations that they were having and the things that they were requesting. Smith knows you can't protect kids from everything, but you can limit exposure. He says parents should use the parental control tools on devices and talk to their kids about expectations. There are at least a, a, a dozen really decent parental controls out there that are going to help manage your child's phone. They're going to help manage your child's console. But sometimes it's not enough. There is software out there like Discord, an independent app that allows communication across any platform or device. So even if chats and communications are disabled on a console, there's still room for predators to reach children. 26% of the population of kids under the age of 18 use something like Discord. My parents have told me that they didn't even know their child had Discord. Now, both Smith and the prosecution in that case in northern Kentucky can't stress enough that you must monitor your child's online time, no matter what device. Now, this case dealt with the PlayStation, but Smith says one of the most common problematic devices parents tell him about is a Kindle Fire, which is just as powerful, he says, as almost any device with online access. Paula? Hard to keep up. Well, thank you, Brad. For more information on parental control devices and apps, go to local12.com.